Hello, and welcome to Artful Insights. I'm Shane Farrell, the Digital Projects and Programs Manager for Arts Philadelphia, and together you and I are going to look at some art today. This video is produced in partnership between Dementia Society of America and Arts Philadelphia. Each month we offer a live program where a small group of people talk about a work of art or works of art from museums and cultural centers around the country. Uh, it's a different museum or cultural center each month. And in addition to that live program, we also produce a video like the one you're watching right now. We look at the same works of art as we did in the live group, but with the video, it's 30 to 40 minutes in length. You can watch it any time, day or night, that might suit you. And it's an opportunity to have a more intimate, self-driven conversation about the art. I'll ask a few questions to get us started, give you a few things to think about. I'll share some of the observations and thoughts that folks from the live group brought up that I think might be interesting for you to consider. But really, this video each month is about you. It's about what you see in these works of art, how you respond to them, and just having the opportunity to look at a work of art and think about it at your own pace. If you're watching this video with someone, please feel free to pause from time to time if you'd like so that you can have your own conversation. If you're watching on your own, we're delighted to have you, and it'll be a conversation just between the two of us. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the museum or cultural center that we're visiting today. Welcome to Artful Insights. So here we are at the museum that we're going to be visiting today. This is the Stanley Museum of Art at the University of Iowa and it was officially established in 1969. In the early 60s, Owen and Leon Elliott, who are from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, offered the university their very extensive collection of 20th century paintings and prints and a number of other art objects on the condition that the university would build a museum to house all of this material. The university had actually been collecting art for some time, so they had collections of their own as well. And they went ahead and started the process of trying to build this museum. So over the next few years, through the help of over 2,000 individuals and businesses, they were able to build an art museum. Today, they house a diverse collection of almost 17,000 objects. They have one of the most significant collections of African art in the country. Uh, they've gone through some significant renovations over the years, including repairs from a flood that happened, which they were able to recover from, luckily. No artworks were permanently damaged. And in 2018, it was renamed as what we know it today, the Stanley Museum of Art due to a large donation from Richard and Mary Stanley. The museum just opened a new building in August of 2022. And if you ever find yourself in Iowa, you'll be able to check out that new building because the Stanley Museum is always free to the public. So now that we've learned a little bit about the museum we're going to be visiting, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the artwork that we're going to be looking at today. So here we are in front of the artwork. Before I say anything about it, I want to give you some time to look it over. As you can see, there's a lot going on in this artwork. So take your time with it and just see where your eye leads you. Um, see what you can make out of this. What do you focus on? Um, what does it bring to mind for you? And once you've had a little bit of a chance to explore on your own, we'll come back together and have a little bit of a discussion about it. 
So go ahead and explore and we'll be right back. So, what were the things that you noticed first about this artwork? There's a lot to look at. So, what drew you in? What was interesting to you about this? What did you notice about it? What details caught your attention? I'd really love to hear what some of your first observations were. In our group discussion online, almost immediately, people started seeing images in this artwork. It's a bit abstract, wouldn't you agree? It's kind of an abstract artwork. Or maybe you disagree entirely. That's okay, too. But to me, it looks a little abstract. And it was interesting to me that in our group discussion, the first thing people started doing was seeing what they saw in this abstract image, bringing it back to something more representational, just regular things that you might see. Right away, someone said, I see a lot of branches. Another person said they saw a fish and some snakes. Another person said they saw people dancing. Was there something you thought of when you looked at this right away? Was there sort of an image you saw within this? And what gave you that impression? It's kind of hard to come to an agreement about what this is a painting of. Different people seem to see different things in it. What do you see in it? I'd love to hear what sort of things you saw. Our group saw all sorts of different things, and I think it's an interesting way to start to get into an abstract painting. Sometimes people have trouble looking at abstract paintings. There's too little order to them, so we try to relate them to something we see in our everyday lives. Abstract paintings can feel a little bit chaotic sometimes or overwhelming. How does this painting make you feel? Do you feel like it's chaotic and overwhelming? Do you feel like it's more of a calm painting? there's some sort of emotion that it communicates to you. So we talked a little bit about what we might see within it, but what does it make us feel? Well, one of the questions we like to ask, and it may seem a little strange at first, but it's related to kind of how a painting makes us feel, what it helps us envision, and what it inspires inside of us. And that question is, what, what do you hear when you look at this painting? Would you say it's a very quiet painting? Would you say it's more of a noisy painting? And what sounds do you hear specifically?
Some of our participants in the live discussion said, to me, it seems very noisy. Why do we think that might be? What about this painting is particularly noisy? How does someone communicate noisiness through a visual artwork? What do we see here that, that makes it feel noisy? Why don't we just zoom in a little bit and we can look at some details as we think about this question. So now that we've zoomed in, we can see some of the close-up details of the artwork a little more clearly. Let's keep thinking about that question. What could make an artwork feel noisy? Well, something I notice is that there's a lot of different marks and they're very close together. Almost every square inch of this painting has something going on in it. There's nowhere to me where the painting feels like it's just at rest. There's kind of frenetic activity all over the entire surface. And one of the participants in our online group discussion talked a little bit about this. They said it's very dynamic and I see a lot of motion and movement. Do you see movement in this? Do you feel like this is a painting that has a lot of moving parts? Or does it feel more still to you? To me personally, it does feel like there's a lot of movement in this painting. If we were to kind of go around tracing different lines in this painting, first of all, there's a lot of them. But second, they're kind of moving in all directions. I'm kind of following along different lines in this painting with my mouse. And they're going kind of all over the place. They're going in every which direction. So maybe that's part of what contributes to the feeling of movement. Is there something that you latch on to about this that makes you feel like there's a lot of movement going on? And how would you describe this movement? There's different types of movement, right? We can think of the movement of the ocean, which is a kind of flowing motion. It's always in motion, there's always lots of movement, but it's a kind of calming motion. Then we could think of something like a big crowd of people walking in every direction. It might be a little less calming, a little more frenetic. Is there something that this reminds you of motion-wise? Why don't we zoom back out for a second? There really is a lot to take in here. And I feel like any of the questions I ask, depending on where we're looking at the moment, our answers could change. There's so much to take in. And one of the participants in our group discussion kind of mentioned that same feeling. He said, confusing. It's very confusing. And I think a lot of people feel that way when they look at paintings like this. It just feels confusing. We think, why did the artist make it this way? What are they trying to communicate to us? Do you have any ideas of what those reasons might be? Or do you also just feel a little confused? And sometimes it can be nice to feel a little confused by artwork, right? That means we're thinking, we're, we're trying to figure something out. And one of our participants in our group discussion sort of mentioned this, this moving from 
confusion to, to trying to figure things out. He said, the more you look at it, the more details you find. There's a lot of work going on in that. And when we looked at it up close, I, I think we can tell that there's some truth to that statement, right? There's lots of layers of paint. There's lots of different colors. There's lots of different types of marks. There's just a lot going on. And so we started to talk about the kind of work of making this painting. And we started to ask each other questions about that. And one of the questions we asked was how long we thought it took the artist to paint this. How long do you think it took the artist to paint this? Some of the participants in the group said, I think it took him or her a while. And it does kind of feel that way to me as well. It kind of feels like something that took some time, even though it's high energy, feels like time was invested into this. Do you feel the same way? Do you feel like this took a lot of time? Or do you feel like this is something the artist did very quickly, very intuitively? Another related question that we asked was, how big do we think this is? How big is this painting? What do you think? Sometimes when something is much bigger, it can take the artist longer to complete than something small. It's just easier to cover small spaces. And big spaces sometimes just take more time. So what do you think? Is this a very small painting? It's just very detailed. Or is it a very big painting where the artist had a lot of space to spread out? Well, I'm not going to give the answer to that now. Of course, there's no wrong or right way to see it, but we do know how big it is, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit toward the end of our discussion. So we kept asking a lot of questions about the artist. We were really focused a bit on what is the artist thinking? What, did, what was the artist doing to make this painting like this? One person joked, I think he was drinking when he made this. And everyone laughed a little bit, but, but maybe there's some sort of uh, truth in that statement. Maybe there's something about this that feels a little bit off balance in some way, like someone might have had a couple drinks before they did it. What do you think it is that gave that person the feeling that the person that painted this was drinking? Is there some quality it has that, that creates that feeling? It's clear that this Painting made people feel a lot of different things. At first, they were recognizing images. They were getting into details about it. They were thinking about the artist. There was a lot of very lively discussion about this. And maybe part of that is because it is abstract. So we can let our imagination kind of dictate what we make out of this. So what stories are you telling yourself about this? Maybe you've thought of things that I haven't thought of or talked about. Maybe you've thought of things beyond just what was the artist doing and what images you see inside of it. I'd be really curious to hear what sort of narratives you come up with to go along with this painting. Because really in abstract art, we can kind of let ourselves go wherever we want to go with something. Is there a particular place that this took you to? Well, our discussion itself is maybe getting a little abstract here. 
So let's just focus in on some kind of smaller, simpler details about this painting. And let's zoom in a little bit while we do that. So here we are zoomed in really close to a section of this painting. Stanley gave us really great images so we can we can really get right up in front of this as if our faces were right in front of this painting, which they don't typically like you to do at the museum. So we're getting to do something a little bit special here, getting really close to the painting on our computers. Now that we're really close up to this, I want to talk about a few different things. One thing I'm interested in talking about is color. What do you notice about the color of this painting? Are there particular colors that catch your eye? And what do all these colors together bring up for us? Why are they all placed next to each other the way that they are? What do you think? Well, as I look through this very close section of this painting, I notice that there's actually a lot of color. And you might not necessarily notice that about this painting from far away. One of our participants said when we first looked at it, uh, the painter's working with a very limited palette here. And maybe from far away, it kind of does look like there's only a few colors in this painting. But when we zoom up really close, I, I see a whole lot of colors. I see greens, I see oranges, yellows, I see dark blue greens, black. There's kind of a mauve pinkish color. There really are a lot of different colors here all in combination. Are there colors that jump out at you in particular? Or do you just kind of scan over the surface of the painting from side to side, finding different colors as you go? Sometimes one thing sticks out to us, and other times everything kind of feels like it's just all together. There's nothing that jumps out first. What do you think about the color in this painting? And when we got to talking about color and looking really closely at the painting like this, we also started to wonder how it was made. How do you think this painting was made? Do you think, or maybe you don't think it's a painting at all? I shouldn't be limiting here, right? This could be made of any kind of material. What do you think this is made out of? And even further, how do you think the artist made this? As we looked up close, people started to say, oh, I think I see brush strokes. And as we look around at this painting in different areas, like here, or maybe this orange right here, or, you know, kind of choose wherever you want, you can see that maybe, yeah, maybe there are brush strokes across this canvas. And maybe we can kind of see how the artist would move their brush around. But if we look closely at this, we can also see some sections where it, it just kind of looks like there's drips of paint. Let's look even a little closer. So right here, for example, in this area, I noticed these little yellow dots, which kind of look like they were just dripped on the surface of painting. And I notice a similar thing here with this red. Kind of looks like the paint 
just kind of dripped onto the surface naturally. What do you think? Are there any mark making strategies that you notice? We talked about brush strokes, we talked about dripping. Maybe you're seeing also some other sort of method going on here. What do you think? How did the artist actually put the paint on the surface of this painting? If we agree it's paint. Well, one of our participants said, I think this painting is very large, and I think the artist had it on the floor of their studio. So sometimes, right, people put a canvas up on the wall and they paint on the wall. This participant seemed to think this wasn't painted on a wall, it was laid on the floor. The artist kind of reached in and maybe even walked on top of it while they were working on it. That's kind of an interesting thought. It's very interesting that we can just look at a painting and develop these ideas about the specific way the artist had it set up in their studio. How do you think this was set up? How did they paint this? Maybe you have a different idea. Well, why don't we zoom out a little bit again? Well, as we continued talking, we asked a very simple question that, that led to a really interesting discussion, which was, do we like this painting? And what do you think? Do you like this? Is this something you enjoy looking at? Or is it something that kind of repels you? And what do you think it is that gives you that feeling? If you like it, what is it that makes you drawn to this? And if you don't like it, what do you think it is that's pushing you away? It's always interesting to kind of investigate our emotions about a painting, even if they're negative. What is it about the artwork that makes us feel a certain way? And as we were talking about whether we liked it or didn't like it, one of our participants made a really interesting comment that I want to share with you word for word. She said, I think the artist himself was abstract. I don't think you can paint like that unless your being is abstract. He sees things the same as us, but then it switches because of his personality. He can see things in many different shapes. To have it look like a piece of art is amazing. If you or I tried to make this, it would just look like a big mess. He knew exactly what he was doing, which to me is brilliant. It really looks like an artwork, and only he really knows what it is. So that's really interesting. I think that's a really kind of beautiful comment, that to create an artwork this abstract, there was something abstract about the person that made it. And what, what could that mean? What do you think could be abstract about a person? Is there some part of yourself that you ever feel is a little bit abstract? I think we all feel a little bit abstract sometimes, right? We don't always have exactly every answer about things. Some things are just kind of vague, abstract impressions. Is there something that makes you feel that way in your own life? And what do you think about what kind of person the artist was? This participant clearly had a very clear idea of what kind of person they thought the artist was. Do you agree with their assessment? Or do you think something else is going on? Well, I think I want to end our discussion with one very simple question. And that's, what would you title this artwork? After we've looked at something for a while, we've talked about seeing different images in it, we've looked at the colors, 
You've thought a lot about the artists that might have made this. How would you summarize all of that just in a title? What do you think you would call this? Love to hear what your title was. In our group discussion, one of our participants said, let's call it Swirls and Curls. Everybody thought that was kind of a fun, funny title. We had just had this very in-depth discussion and we just kind of came back to the very basic kind of movement of the painting. It was swirly and curly. I wonder what your title would be. Well, now that we've looked at this for a while and we've had a bit of a discussion, I want to share some information about the painting. So this is a work by Jackson Pollock. You may have heard of him before. He's a very famous painter. He does a lot of abstract expressionist painting. And the title of the painting is just Mural, 1943. And it's about eight to nine feet tall and almost 20 feet wide. So this is a really, really big painting. And we kind of picked up on that in our discussion, didn't we? It was actually painted for someone's townhouse in New York. They had this big mural inside their home. And eventually it ended up at the Stanley Museum. Someone asked as we started started talking about it. Is this inside? Is it outside? Does it have its own room? It's so big. And it doesn't have its own room, but it does have its own wall. And the whole room it's in was designed around this painting because it's so big that it kind of had to have a special room to fit it. Apparently, the artist for weeks stared at just a blank canvas, not knowing what to paint and painted this whole thing in one crazy burst of energy on New Year's Day. He apparently envisioned it as a stampede of animals going across the plains of America. I wonder if any of you envisioned something similar when you looked at this. And perhaps it's worth mentioning that even the kind of silly off handed comment that someone made that they thought he was drinking while he did this might have some truth to it. Jackson Pollock struggled with alcoholism in his life, and he was drinking at the time in his life when he painted this artwork. So it's very possible that what they said, although it sounded like a joke, might have been true, and maybe that affected the way he painted in some way. So now that we've learned a little bit of additional details about the artwork, just want to give you one more moment to look at it, to reflect, and to see if those additional details make you see anything new about it. Do you notice something now that you didn't notice before? Does it change the way you look at this in any way? Knowing that it's giant, knowing a little bit about what the artist thought about it and a little bit about how he made it. Does that change your perception in any way? Well, I want to thank you so much for being here today to have this discussion with me. I've really enjoyed talking with you about this artwork. I hope you've enjoyed talking with me as well. I want to thank Amanda Lensing from the Stanley Museum for making this program possible. She was the one who helped us uh, get a look at these artworks and work with the Stanley Museum. So a big thank you to Amanda. I want to thank, as always, the Dementia Society of America for helping make this program possible, no matter what museum we're visiting. But most of all, I want to thank you just for spending this time with me, looking at an artwork together. I know that abstract artwork can sometimes be a little confusing and difficult, but I hope that you had a fun time looking at it and that you had a fun time imagining things about it together.
So thanks for joining me for another episode of Artful Insights. If you enjoyed the discussion, or even if you didn't, I hope you might join us sometime for our group discussions that happen over Zoom. You can register for those at artsphilly.org. It's arts with a Z. And I would love to see you there sometime to look at another work of art from another museum somewhere in the United States. Thanks again for joining me. I'm Shane Farrell from Arts Philadelphia, and this has been Artful Insights. Thank you.